I'm recording this quick insert at the end of the review. I'm going to place it back at the beginning just to let you know how much trouble I've had saying Traduto throughout this recording. Maybe it's because I speak English and I don't speak Italian or any other similar languages, but I've struggled mightily throughout this recording to say Traduto over and over again. So I apologize if I mince my words, if I mumble, if I'm hard to understand. I've done my best and I might throw a few bloopers at the end, so do stay tuned and watch out for that. Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. And today we're looking at the very teeny tiny Eamon Traduto DAC. I previously reviewed the Eamon Eagle and Eamon Sparrow, their portable dongle style devices. And I love both of them. They're kind of my reference point at their individual prices. So I was very keen to try the Traduto and see if it performed as well as the Eagle and the Sparrow. The Traduto is a 799 US dollar DAC and it's built on the ES9038Q2M chip. If that chip number doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. I only share it for those that are interested. Basically, that means this is a Delta Sigma DAC in much the same way as most of the DACs on the market. It uses a chip that is bought from a company, in this case ESS, and that chip does all the decoding and is built into a circuit that provides a power supply, digital inputs, and analog outputs to work around that DAC chip. On paper, the Traduto has some pretty strong specifications in that it will handle all different sample rates up to 768 kilohertz in PCM or DXD and also all the way up to DSD 512. That's of course on top of the standard MP3 and FLAC style sample rates that you'll get from Spotify, Tidal, Cobas or your local CD library. But it also means that if you're into high res, if you're into upsampling, things like that, the Traduto will absolutely work for that. Now having just mentioned Tidal, I should also mention that the Traduto is fully MQA capable. So if you are using Tidal or you have some other MQA source, the Traduto will absolutely handle all of those tracks. I'm not going to get into the debate as to whether MQA is a good thing or a bad thing. The reality is it's built in here, it's made available by the processing chip built into the Traduto, and therefore there's no point not having it switched on if it's available. I'll leave it up to you to decide whether you use it. I don't personally use MQA, but I'm also not one of those people that believes we should boycott it because there's some questions around the quality. For me, I think it's great for DACs to offer the versatility so that you as a consumer can make up your mind whether you use it or whether you don't. There's been some talk that sometimes you're paying more for a DAC because it's got MQA, but realistically, the cost of that input is so low that it's not going to move the needle on the price of a product. So it's there if you want it. If you don't, ignore it. It's completely fine. While we're talking about the design and functionality of the DAC, let me give you a quick tour of the front and back plates. The front of the Traduto is fairly simple. We've got a power button, we've got a Bluetooth button, and we've got left and right buttons. And they're all very, very basic functions. The power is on off, the Bluetooth button is for Bluetooth control, and the left and right buttons cycle through your source options. Very, very basic. There's also a nice display in the center, which is a very clean white on black display, and it shows minimal information, but everything you need to know. Moving around to the back, things do get a little bit more interesting. On the back, we've got a power input for 12 volt power. This comes with a Walwart style switch mode power supply, and that's totally fine. But I do want to mention that as a desktop style device, even though it's very compact, I'm assuming it's designed for desktops, I find the cord just a little bit short. Going just from ground level or just above ground level at a PowerPoint up to my desk, I find I've only just got enough length to get to the Traduto if it's at the edge of my desk. 
If I want to bring it closer to the middle of my desk, further away from the wall behind me, I do struggle with the length a little bit. So it would have been nice to see a tiny bit more length on that, but it's not a big deal. A lot of you might have things like power boards underneath desks, so it won't be such an issue. Beyond that, we've also got a Bluetooth antenna here. I haven't got the antenna connected, but that's what this little screw thread's here for. And the Traduto will handle all basic codecs and also the high definition ones like Aptex HD. And that's fantastic. That means you can run your phone, tablet, computer, whatever you want, Bluetooth transmitting to the Traduto and get fantastic quality sound. It's still not lossless, so it's not going to match a wired connection, but it's very, very good if you're using something like Aptex HD. Now, if you just saw the box move in my edit, it's because I quickly picked it up to check if there's LDAC compatibility here, and there doesn't appear to be. I'll put a note down below. If it does have LDAC, I'll do a quick test before I edit this, but I don't believe it has LDAC. It does have Aptex HD though. Moving on from the Bluetooth, we've got a USB-B connector, so full-sized USB, and it comes with a nice enough generic USB cable in the box. There's also optical and regular speed of RCA connections. So all your basic normal connections, nothing fancy like AES or I2S, but all the regular basic players are there. Finally on the end we've got our analog outputs in the form of a pair of stereo RCA connections and then also a 4.4mm socket. And this is one area where I do have a very minor issue with the Trudeau. I don't mind the fact they've used 4.4mm because it's allowed them to have this beautiful compact little chassis. What it means though is that you have to go out and get yourself a 4.4mm to XLR cable if you're running most amplifiers on the market. And if you've ever tried to buy such a cable, you'll know that it's not easy. I ended up resorting to buying something from AliExpress. It was cheap, it was basic, the plugs don't feel very good, the sound of it's okay I think, but it was not a great experience having to go and order it from AliExpress and then wait for it to arrive, which can take weeks, months sometimes, it all varies. So that wasn't great. And my point in saying all this is I do think that at $799 US dollars, Eman should be providing a 4.4 to XLR fly lead in the box. Something that allows you to then connect the existing XLR cables that many of us audiophiles have directly into the Traduto. It probably would have cost them a few dollars more if it's produced in bulk, and it would have made the experience of unboxing this and playing it immediately a much better experience. Particularly when you hear what I'm going to say shortly about the sound quality. Before we get too bogged down on that though, I want to mention a couple of other positives about the sound of the Traduto. I think first of all, the interface here is wonderful. It's very simple, it's very clean, it's no frills. There's not lots of menus to go through, you pretty much turn this on, select your source and enjoy the music. I like the fact that the display is nice and clean, it's not overly busy, it just shows you what you want to know, which source you're using and what the sample rate is that's coming through. Something else that I like, and in fact I'd go so far as saying love, is that it comes with this little remote. Now, remotes aren't that big of a deal, lots of DACs have them, but this one is lovely. It's beautifully machined and finished, the buttons don't rattle like many of the machine remote controls do. It's also very simple still, you've got the exact same four buttons on here that you've got on the front of the device, so it's not like it adds extra features, and I'm a big fan of that. I don't particularly like devices where you've got a set of features from the remote control that you can't access from the device. If you're like me and you've got a desktop or a bedside setup where you can reach the device very easily, having to reach for the remote control to access things you can't access directly is a little bit annoying for me. So I like the fact that this just gives you access to everything that the device does only further away. The other thing that's really cool is there's a USB-C socket on the bottom so you can just recharge this. No changing batteries, no having to throw batteries out and pollute the environment. I think it's a fantastic inclusion. So bravo Eman for doing that. And so at this point, there's a lot of things I really like about the Trudeau. There's a couple of things that I'm not a fan of, like the 4.4mm not having a fly lead provided, and also the power lead being probably just 20 centimeters too short for my tastes. But other than that, everything's great. I love its form factor. It's a beautiful solid feeling unit. This is all aluminium on the top and the front and the back and the sides. It does have a printed steel base. I don't have an issue with that. Once it's set up, you're never gonna see the base anyway. I think it's a beautifully designed DAC and I love the small footprint. And so all of this leads me to sound quality. Does it stack up from a sonic point of view with a $799 price tag? 
Before I get into talking about the sound, I want to talk briefly about the input quality and the output quality. Firstly, I tried the inputs. I was running a Pi 2 AES as my streaming device because that allows me to run a whole lot of different outputs concurrently. And so I connected this up using a Super Excalibur USB cable, a Super Optical cable, and the Wave High Fidelity Storm BNC cable to check out all the different inputs. So the cables are all a little bit different, but they're all high quality. In the case of the Wave cable, it's extreme quality. And what I noticed was that the differences between the inputs were not significant enough that I'd put them down to anything more than subtle cable variations and input protocol variations. In other words, you can buy the Toto, run it with whatever source you have, with whatever protocol it uses, optical, SPDIF, or USB, and you're going to enjoy great sound. Of course, if you're using Bluetooth, there will be a small drop off because they're not lossless, but with the various physical connections, you're absolutely guaranteed maximum sound quality. When we flip to the analog outputs though, things are not so similar. During my initial testing, I was hoping to use this just with the RCAs because then I could match up the quality of the interconnects that I was using on this with other devices that I had. As it happens though, when I was flipping back and forth between the balanced and the single ended outputs, even when I channel matched in between, which was a bit fiddly because I had to manually adjust the volume each time, but what I noticed was that I was getting a significantly better sound from the balanced outputs. And that's even with the cheap crappy AliExpress cable compared to a top end set of Super RCA cables. And so I think if you are going to buy the Triple Toe, I think you absolutely should run it balanced. What I was getting when I ran it balanced was a greater sense of space, both left and right, but also a little bit more depth. And also what surprised me the most was a much deeper sense of bass. It was not even close. I've never heard this kind of change in a DAC before, and it had me going back and forth, trying to check if I was missing something. I double checked my volume matching a few times because I couldn't believe that that much difference was going to happen. But the bass depth I heard from the balanced output was absolutely hands down better than what I was hearing from the single ended. So I can't fully explain it. I'm not sure what was going on there, but for me, I would absolutely want to run this with the balanced outputs. The single ended wasn't bad, but in comparison, the balanced was so much better. And so with all that said, let me talk to you about what the general sound quality was from the Eman Trudeau. This is generally a really solid sounding DAC. As you'd expect from a company that's made products like the Eagle and the Sparrow, they haven't missed a beat with the Trudeau. It's not in my opinion the best DAC that I've heard, and we'll get to that shortly, but it's a really solid offering. There's no sense of coloration in the sound, which in my opinion is what you want from a DAC, and it's still smooth and enjoyable to listen to overall. I felt like maybe there was a slight sense of treble glare from the Trudeau, but that's in comparison to the DACs that I'm used to, such as the Hugo TT2 with the M Scaler and the shit Yggdrasil OG, both of which have a different approach to digital conversion, and also both of which are significantly more expensive. So let's wait for some detailed comparisons with similar price DACs before we get too hung up on that, but I did feel like maybe there was just a bit more attack than I wanted on some of the notes. To investigate that a little bit further, I tried connecting up my Geisler Audio Craftwork 2 linear power supply, and I felt like that helped with the glare just a little bit. But again, I don't necessarily know that I'd go out and invest a fortune on a linear power supply to pair up with a 799 US dollar DAC. Most good quality power supplies are going to set you back three, four hundred US dollars to start with, so you start to question whether there's value there. The final thing that I'd mention is that as is always the case in my experience with chip-based Delta Sigma DACs, in other words, those that use Sabre chips, AKM chips, Cirrus Logic, any of those, is they all tend to produce a fairly flat soundstage. And the Trudeau is no exception. There is a little bit of depth there, but not very much. And most of the information is spread left to right, and it is a little bit of a wall of sound. Now for some people, that's preferable. Some people like the fact that that brings all the details forward and gives you a really strong sense of clarity and texture in the music. I personally am not as much of a fan of that as a more three-dimensional approach with a bit more layering and separation, but we'll talk about that in the comparisons. Ultimately at this point, what I was hearing was a DAC that I could very comfortably live with. It's a good solid sound, it's not overly harsh, it's not overly muted, it just was doing everything well. Putting it in the tiny compact case that it's in, and I can absolutely see the Trudeau having a fantastic place in a lot of systems. But to work out if you should spend your $799 US dollars on a Trudeau, 
I thought it was worth putting it up against two other options. One is $100 cheaper, one is $100 more expensive. And so let's start cheaper. If you've watched the channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of the Shit Bifrost 2. This uses Shit's multi-bit approach, which does things a little bit differently. It won't do DSD, it won't do high sample rate PCM or DXD. So it's a very basic DAC in terms of sample rates, but a very accomplished DAC in the quality of the sound it produces. I should mention that for all of these comparisons, I couldn't match the interconnects because I only had the 4.4mm output from the Traduto in order to maximize its quality and its performance. I didn't want to use the RCAs. And so I was using my cheap AliExpress cable from this while I was using my normal test cables, which are the Curious XLRs, for the rest of the chain. In both of these comparisons, I was feeding the signal from both DACs into the Burson Solo S3XP and driving the HIFO and Sesfaras. One of the tracks I tried when comparing with the Bifrost 2 was when the Angels fall by Sting. Flipping back and forth between the two DACs, it was very clear that the Bifrost 2 is easier to listen to. It's not soft or mushy or anything like that, but I was able to relax more as I listened to it. That said, the differences are very subtle, and that's definitely a compliment to the Traduto. The Traduto had a bit more attack on the notes, and it did make it come across just a little bit harsher and a little bit edgier, but only a very, very small amount. And I think some people are going to prefer that sense of attack, depending on your system, your headphones, your general preferences, your speakers if you're using speakers. There are times that I think that bit of extra attack could actually be beneficial, but personally for me, across all the different headphones I tried, I did still prefer the Bifrost 2. As an example of when this can be both good and bad, in the opening of When the Angels Fall, there's a bit of cymbal work going on, and in listening through the Traduto, it provided a slightly better sense of the nuanced kind of shimmer and ring of those cymbals. And I did feel like I was missing that a little bit from the Bifrost 2. But then later, as the track got busier, I felt like sibilance, so the S and T, sounds like that from Sting vocals and also the snare hits and similar type percussion sounds, those were getting a bit harsh from the Traduto, but sounded great from the Bifrost 2. So there's going to be a bit of a trade-off there. I personally lean towards the Bifrost 2's presentation overall, but it's going to come down to system and personal preferences as I said before. The other things to mention are that the Bifrost 2 produces a better sense of depth and layering. It's not hugely more spacious on this particular track compared to the Traduto, but there's definitely a little bit more depth in the mix. Sting is brought just a little bit forward and the other instruments do sit back from him. That particular difference was slight, but something that wasn't slight and kind of surprised me a bit was that I was able to hear the room a lot more from the Bifrost 2. And what I mean by that was that things like reverb and echo from the guitars in particular, I was hearing it much more from the Bifrost 2, whereas it was like the ambience of the room was getting cut off by the Traduto. Now, if you've watched my reviews with Rob Watts from Chord Electronics, or you've heard me talk before about Delta Sigma DAX versus Multibit or Chords DAX or even R2R, then you might have heard me talk before about the fact that the way the DAC handles transients and specifically the very, very focused timing of those transients is very, very important to how our brain pieces together spatial information. And so I'm assuming what's going on here is that the multi-bit approach and the way they focus on timing accuracy and the way they focus on timing accuracy as well as frequency accuracy, that I'm assuming is what's allowing the Bifrost 2 to give a much better sense of ambience. It was really obvious and clear, and once I heard it, I really couldn't unhear the difference. None of this is to say that the Traduto is doing a bad job, but I just suddenly felt like I was much more present in the live recording space from the Bifrost 2, whereas the Traduto was kind of reminding me it was a recording by chopping off that ambience. Not a bad listen, but I do still find the Bifrost 2 a better overall DAC. That said, maybe you don't want to buy shit products, pun sort of intended. Maybe you want something really compact like the Trudeau. Maybe you love E-Men as a brand. There's no reason not to buy the Trudeau. It's an excellent DAC, but my personal money would go towards the Bifrost 2. But what if you want MQA? Maybe you're in the market specifically for MQA. Tidal might be your only available or preferable streaming service, and therefore you want to maximize the potential of that by using MQA. In that case, you might be looking at this as one of your options, and also potentially the topping D90SE. The D90SE costs $100 more, and on paper, they're otherwise very similar DACs. D90SE has a few other bells and whistles. It's got full-size XLR outputs. It's got a few extra inputs like I2S. It gives you volume control as well. So it does have some benefits for that $100. But I was interested to see if you're just in it for the sound quality, how do they stack up? 
For this comparison, one of the tracks I tried was Fishies by the Cat Empire, and in listening to the two DACs flipping back and forth, I found that the Dredutto was a bit smoother of a listen compared to the D90SE. Things like cymbals and the high trumpet notes get just a bit aggressive from the D90SE, and that's often been my criticism of that DAC. It's a good solid DAC, but I just think it gets a bit too sharp on the edges sometimes. I also felt like in addition to being a bit smoother, and therefore a bit more enjoyable to listen to, the Dredutto was kind of focusing the image just a bit better. I felt like when I went back and forth between the two, it was like if the image was this wide on the Tradutto and it sounded right, that image was kind of just spread a little bit wider and therefore a little bit less focused when I went to the D90SE. Again, it wasn't bad, but I do think the Tradutto was doing a better job of focusing that image for me. I also think the Tradutto had a slight edge in soundstage depth. Even though no Delta Sigma DACs tend to produce very much depth, there was just a little tiny bit more coming from the Tradutto. As I flipped back and forth between the two, it was like on the D90SE, the vocalist and the trumpet player was standing absolutely side by side. When I flipped back to the Earman DAC though, it was like now the vocalist was here and the trumpet player had just taken a half step back. There wasn't much depth there and that was about as deep as the soundstage got, but it was definitely a little tiny bit better than the D90SE. And my guess is that that might come down to how the output stage has been designed as opposed to anything specific about the DAC chip itself. Ultimately though, I might have overstated here just how different these DACs are, because realistically, they're very, very similar. And the things I've just described to you was me really critically listening and honing in on specific things that stood out as I flipped back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Realistically, you can't go wrong with either of these DACs if you want a quality, MQA-capable, Sabre-based DAC. They're both good. As I said before, D90SE does offer you some extra functionality. On the other hand, the Dredutto is cheaper and it's tiny. So it all comes down to what you're looking for. For those that are interested in MQA, I did quickly try MQA on both devices. And what I found was that everything I've just said stays true for MQA. The D90SE comes across a little bit flatter and a little bit brighter, but they're very, very similar overall. So if it was me, I'd probably base the decision more on things like the form factor. Do you want full-size XLR? the price of course, and whether the ability to have the preamp control of the D90SE is of value to you. The other thing that's worth noting is I didn't take the time to fiddle with all the filters that are available in the D90SE. There is a chance that I could have created that little tiny bit of extra depth and a little bit of smoother sound if I played with the filters. I left the D90SE in the default settings because I didn't want to go down the rabbit hole of trying to compare filters on one DAC when the other one's got a fixed output. So long story short, I think you could probably optimize the D90SE to basically match the Tradutto if you wanted to, and that's why I'm saying I would base my decision on price, size, and functionality. And so with all that said, to bring this to a close, I think the Eman Tradutto is a fantastic DAC. I think at the price, it offers really good functionality, a beautiful compact design, there's a few gripes that I've got there, like the power cable and the 4.4mm output with no adapter provided, but I do think for its size and its price, it's a very solid performer. If it were my money to spend, I'd still buy Bifrost 2, and if you want that extra functionality, there are great options in the form of things like the D90SE or the SMSL DO200, but neither of those is as simple and as compact as the Tordudo, and in the case of the D90SE, it's also more expensive. So it is one to have on your list, particularly as I said before, if you're into listening to Tidal and MQA Masters from Tidal, because often Tidal gives you no choice, the Tordudo may be a great way to get the maximum out of that service. So do consider it if you're in the market. I'll put some links down below. Emen themselves have sent me this one, so thank you to them for sending out the Tordudo, and I'll put some links down below where you can find out more information if you're interested in the Emen Tordudo. For now though, as always, if you found this review useful, I'd love it if you did subscribe, ring the bell, and hit the like button to tell YouTube you want to see more of these videos, and to tell me the sorts of videos you're enjoying. For now though, let me leave you to the music, so happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.
so I was extremely keen to try the Trudeau. So come with me now as I explore the Trudeau. The Trudeau. The Trudeau. On paper, the Trudeau has some fan. Nah. I should also mention that the Trudeau and the Trudeau and the Trudeau do have a slight issue with the Trudeau from the Trudeau and the Trudeau coming out of the four pin socket on the back of the Trudeau. And that's definitely a compliment to the Trudeau. Nah. I found the Trudeau. I found that the Trudeau. I found that the Trudeau. I found that the Trudeau. Nah, it's so hard to say. I found that the Trudeau had so much. <laughs> I found that the Trudeau. I found that the Trudeau. <laughs> the Trudeau had. The Trudeau. The Trudeau had. 